Ouch. I found a new hiding spot for the goods. Don't tell anyone. So I got this new security bot 2000. And what really got my magical unicorn horn in a bunch is Nathan is trying to replace me with a cheap knockoff unicorn from Wish. Activate security protocol. Security systems active on online ways to detect any intruders. Oh, I wonder if Sparkles left any lucky charms in here. Let me just check real quick. Oh dear, I cannot find the dust collector. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Nathan, this is Royal Masters. So I had the opportunity to try out Seagull's newest world vacuum. Uh, this company actually is overseas and they actually specialize in high-end robotics. Uh, you can see that they have different types of products. So down below is the Rope Tusk, that's the one I tried out. But you also have the Robe Service Robot, which actually can deliver food to guests in hotels. Also you got like a customer service robot. And lastly you got like a delivery service. So this is a company that specializes in high-end robot vacuums. And they try to to like hotels, office use, and also home use. And I'm very excited to try out this Seago robot vacuum. So we'll see how well it is. Let's get started. So one of my favorite challenges I like to do is the navigation challenge. I like to see how well these world vacuums can navigate different types of obstacles. So I placed on different varieties of water bottles and uh, juice drinks just to see how well the laser system can pick up these objects. Also I put some larger objects down to see if the world vacuum can recognize them. The seagull did a pretty good job navigating these obstacles without really getting stuck or getting hung up. I also did this in my entire floor plan. There's a bunch of sensors to help the robot vacuum navigate its environment. There's the physical bump sensor, where most robot vacuums have. Also, there's a suite of infrared sensors in the bumper there, so it helps detect objects and slow the robot vacuum, so it doesn't damage your furniture. Also, this guy has a dedicated wall sensor. Notice that little uh, circle on the right there. Yep, that's where it houses the wall sensor to help with the debris along the edges. So it took about an hour and a half to do my entire floor plan. I found even on its lowest power setting, it was able to pick up a large amount of dirt and debris. I was quite impressed. Usually these world vacuums don't pick up very well on its lowest setting, but I'll definitely test how well it does on its high setting. And you see that the dustbin is very large. I believe the dustbin size is around 600 milliliters. Now if you look closely at the front bumper, you may notice these little uh, infrared uh, emitters. You won't see that in real life, but it does show up on camera. So let's see how well the seagull does on carpet. I did run this raw vacuum on its highest power level for this test, but if you want a little bit quiet operation, I do recommend selecting low. There's also a standard setting. Oh, did I tell you that this thing has an electronically controlled mopping system as well? Setting up the mopping system is fairly easy. Just put in warm or cold water. I don't recommend any chemicals. Could damage the hoses or pumps. Also, you may notice that slow top loading dustbin. Yes, this guy can vacuum and mop at the same time. So out of the box comes with two washable mopping pads, it makes it fairly easy to clean. I wish there was an option to do disposable mopping pads, I know some people like that. So my recommendation is to pre-wet the mopping pad prior to use, just to help create an even flow with the uh, water distribution. And once you got everything set up, just kind of line up the mopping pad with the velcro strips, and just press down and you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and see how well the seagull does with mopping. So this guy provides a lot of different options for the user. Uh, one thing you could do is you can actually install a uh, gravity fed system and use this large dustbin here. Let me show you how that works. So if we flip over the roll of vacuum, you may notice like some clips on the side there. That's what the gravity fed mopping system attaches to. Uh, so you can get that large dustbin and still mop. So here's a look at the electronically controlled mopping system. You may notice that the dustbin is removable and this is where you fill up the water tank. I found that the water tank is fairly large so it can cover a larger area. Also, since it's electronically controlled, once the robot vacuum is done mopping, we have to shut off the water pump so it doesn't seep water onto your floors. So just one thing to note is this guy doesn't have a carpet avoidance sensor like on Ecovax. So when you're mopping, it will happily mop your carpets. To avoid this, just go into the app and set up keep out zones so you don't have wet, soggy carpets like I do. I will take one for the team and let my carpets become like rags. Uh, but don't worry, someday I'll replace them with the hardwood floors. Okay, let's see how well this guy did. My floors look fairly clean, but you know, looks can be deceiving. And it looks like this guy picked up a fair amount of dirt and debris from its mopping system. Uh, this guy is designed for light mopping tasks. Don't expect it to do like heavy dirt and grime. And also the water tank is very large. And you can see that there's still a fair amount of water left, so it can cover a large area. I do like the removal of dustbin. It really makes it easy to empty out the dustbin and not take the entire unit out. 
And even though I just ran into a vacuum a few times, still managed to pick up some more dirt and debris. Well, if your house has been invaded by magical unicorns like me, uh, just launch the remote control app and steer the world vacuum around to take care of the problem. It's great that this world vacuum will turn on its vacuum motor and extract the bar, so as you steer the world vacuum around, it will clean as well. Also, it's great for entertaining the kids. They can drive it like an RC car, and also, you know, they're doing your dirty work where they're going around and clean up your messes. Well, the real question is, does this world vacuum actually clean? Well, we'll go and see in this challenge here. So I did run this vacuum prior to doing this test to help break in the filters. I would like to use brand new filters or extractor bars because it doesn't really simulate the real world. And it looks like this dustbin weighs 9.775 ounces. Also, we'll put down about 2 ounces of dirt and material. So with most LiDAR based world vacuums, including this one, they start with the perimeter sweep first, getting that dirt and debris away from the baseboards. Once they're done, they're actually filling that perimeter with a back and forth clean pattern. So I found out there's a few options in the map where you can do an area select, you can also do a keep out zone, and lastly you can do a spot clean. The DK wall sensor did a good job going along the edges, keeping an optimal distance for the efficiency of the side brushes, and it did a good job getting away the dirt and debris from your baseboards. Also, I like the dual side brush design. It really helps getting the dirt and debris from both the left and right side of the world of vacuum. I think most world of vacuum should incorporate this design. Now, the downsides they aren't speed sensitive, so in open areas they do scatter the dirt and debris around. You're probably wondering why in the world is there a water bottle sitting on top of my chair? You probably think I'm going crazy, but actually, this is the aggressive test. What I try to do is see how aggressive the world of vacuum is once it detects an object. So, this world of vacuum luckily is not very aggressive, it's actually a gentle cleaner, so it doesn't bump into objects hard enough to knock over this water bottle. So I kind of upped the challenge here, so I took a wire chair leg, so the problem with this wire chair leg is the laser system doesn't pick it up, also the infrared sensors fail to pick up this, so it's relying on its physical bump sensor, and as well a fact did a really good job kind of feeling where it's around, and not being too aggressive, so the honey bottle didn't get knocked over. Well, if you liked this video so far, please give me a big old thumbs up. It really does help out the video and his channel. Or just do it for the world of vacuum. He's doing his best to show you what he's capable of doing. I know I'd like to stress test these world of vacuums, put them in live obstacles, and this guy is doing his best. So if he doesn't get a thumbs up, he's sad and goes back to his docking station to just charge and not do anything. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nathan, his Royal Masters. So, this channel is dedicated to World of Vacuums and uh, cleaning products. I do a lot of head to head challenges, unboxings, reviews. I had had the opportunity to work with a lot of great companies uh, from high end companies like iRobot and Ecovax and Roborock, from some no name brands, which gives me an insight of how well these guys do. So, I did have this guy run on his max power mode. Also, I ran it twice. So, we'll see how much dirt and debris is. So, it looks like there's a lot of dirt and debris in the dustbin, but the scale doesn't lie. It looks like we're at 11.45 ounces. So, if I did the math right, we came up with a score of 83%. Not too bad. Uh, it's a little bit lower than what most high end raw vacuums can achieve, around like the 90% mark. But I suspect that's due to the side brushes. They did spin quite fast, kind of scouting the debris around. And in my testing, I noticed there was some do and debris left behind. So in reality, I could probably run this uh, once or twice more and pick up the majority of this debris. Seiko so did a good job providing a nice detailed instruction manual. So if you do to raw vacuums, I highly recommend reading these. Uh, it really gives you a lot of insight like how to maintain your raw vacuum. Also, you may notice that uh, additional mopping plate you can buy, and it gives you some legal information. Also, I found that they provide a nice little start guide for the app. So you just scan the QR code with your camera, and you should be good to go. Works on both Android and iOS. Now, one thing to remember is you can't use 5 gigahertz networks. You have to use 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks. So the docking station is nothing special, but it does have a green indicator. Also, underneath you can wrap the cable around. Makes it really nice to help with the cable management. I did find that the power adapter supports the 100 and 240 volts, so you can take this overseas. Seagull kept the design fairly basic, but the two button design is multi-function. You can do spot clean, you can actually do return to home, and if you hold the buttons down, you can actually do Wi-Fi pairing. Unfortunately, there's no clickable knobby dummy thingy. Yes, that's a term I came up with. So there's no pressure sensor to avoid hitting its uh, head there. On the front, there's the infrared sensors and physical bump sensor. Notice that uh, DK wall sensor. In the back, there's that large dustbin. I believe it's 600 milliliters. I like the fact that the dustbin is clear, so you can easily see how much dirt debris in the dustbin. Also, the removing it from the wheel wasn't too hard. I know some people like the top loading system. So this wall vacuum is a very typical design. You got your dual side brushes, your front wheel caster, your dual charging contacts, 
and there's three clip sensors to prevent going down the stairs. Also notice that cover plate for the battery makes it really easy to remove the battery. Got your nameplate, adjustable wheels, and lastly there's the extractor bar. Let's check out the extractor bar here. It's a combination style and you notice the low profile of the bristles. Now unfortunately you can't remove the ends and you can see that the hair does get wrapped around. Luckily they provide a cleaning tool to help remove the hair off the brushes. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the Seagull app and its features, and once I'm done with that, I'll give you my overview of what I think about the Raw Vacuum. So once we launch the Seagull app, you grew with the main menu here, you could launch into your Raw Vacuum. If you have multiple Raw Vacuums, you'll be listed here. Also down below is the Home, you got Smart. This is really cool, uh, there's a lot of cool features you could do. So one example is, let's say you have dry weather, well, once it gets to a certain uh, humidity, you can actually tell the Raw Vacuum to go out to pick up the dust and debris to help with the allergies, so that's very, very cool. You can also set when the Raw Vacuum goes out, sunrise, sunset. So I haven't got to play around with it, but it's a really cool option. Now let's go and uh, jump into me. This is just basically your confirmation. And if you have any problems with the Raw Vacuum or any messages, they show up here. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the actual Raw Vacuum itself. And this is a typical Raw Vacuum layout. You got your name up top, you got your settings, you can actually uh, rename the Raw Vacuum, you got your map, and there's some uh, quick function toggles down below. And in the middle, there's like your information about the status of the Raw Vacuum. So let's go ahead and check out the uh, edit there. So you can change the name of the Raw Vacuum to whoever you like. Also, you have the ability to uh, do the automation task, which I just showed. You also have Alexa, Google Assistant, um, some uh, overseas virtual assistants, which one is Ding Dong. That's actually pretty interesting. Maybe I should get Ding Dong and see how well that guy does. You can also turn off the offline notifications. You can share a device, create groups. Um, you can do software updates. So you can actually check up, uh, see if you have the latest firmware. You can do automatic firmware as well, which is a really nice feature. Okay, let's go and uh, jump down below here. We got auto clean, we got spot clean, which does a 1 by 8 by 1.8 meter uh, square. You also have area clean. And one nice feature is it remembers the last area clean. So all you have to do is just press the go button if you have a concentrated area. Um, you can also add new ones. One downside is you can't tell the world vacuum to clean multiple areas. But one trick I found is you can actually overlay multiple areas to have the world vacuum to clean the area uh, more than once. But maybe in the future they can provide a software update. Okay, let's go and uh, jump back to the main menu here. You also have recharge, and lastly, we got virtual wall. So once we add a virtual wall, you can actually tell the Raw Vacuum to not clean that area or something. Okay, let's go ahead and check out the settings. Now you can find robot, which will announce its position. You can do the remote control, which is a fun feature for the kids. Do not disturb as she turns off the voice. One weird quirk is there's no uh, voice control or volume control, so it's either off or on, which is interesting. Also, you can reset the map. So if you have any issues with the map, just delete it and start over. One downside is there's no multi-map support. Hopefully they can provide that in the future. Record is kind of like a history report. Kind of tells you the last cleaning record. Um, also gives you the map and time and how much area they were vacuum clean. So that's really nice uh, feature. Okay, so you also have the scheduling app, which they call the timer. Uh, basically, it allows you to schedule when the world vacuum goes out. Also, one interesting thing is you can actually pause the world vacuum. So let's say, for example, you're coming home at this certain time, you don't want to be bothered by noise. You can actually start the world vacuum for a period of time. And then once you're ready for the world vacuum to resume, you can actually schedule it to go back on again. So that's something I haven't seen on a lot of world vacuums. Also, you can uh, tell it to go on certain days. And you can set the notification and set a little reminder. Maybe you can say Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, do the kitchen or something. But one thing is you can't do area select within the timer. Okay, let's go and uh, jump back here. Now you got the side brush. Um, basically, this is just like the consumable times when you need to replace them. Kind of tells you uh, when, when that needs to be done. And it's highly recommended that you replace your consumables at the recommended uh, times. Now, here's where you can change the power levels. You got low, high, and standard. And that's the same that goes with the vacuum levels as well. And more information is just the information about the product. Okay, so that's just a quick look at the raw vacuum. Uh, let's go ahead and see my thoughts about it. Okay, let's give you my thoughts about this Royal Vacuum and the pros and cons. So the pros is the Royal Vacuum is a pretty good navigator. It's able to navigate various objects and also not bump into them too hard. So you can see that the water bottle and juice box doesn't get knocked over. Also, I found out the Royal Vacuum is able to transition over different types of carpet and thresholds. The downside is this Royal Vacuum did struggle with the shoestring test. Now, if you have a lot of power cables, I do recommend using the keep out zone or just pick them up so the Royal Vacuum doesn't get stuck. But it does notify you via the app if there's any issues. Now, the Royal Vacuum does have the ability to resume if it gets stuck. So that's a nice plus. 
Hopefully down the road, Sega can add some additional features like be able to change the volume, also room select, and multi-map support. That would be a nice addition to this rollout vacuum. Before we end this video, I want to give a special thanks out to everyone that's watched my videos, support my channel over the year or so. Uh, this channel has grown a lot and we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. So thanks again so much for being a supportive group. Also, I want to thank the company Seagull for providing me this unit in exchange for a review. Uh, I don't know if I disclosed that in the beginning, but I will put some text up there just so you guys know. So thanks again, and I hope I can work with the company again and uh, showcase the other products. So you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time. See you later.